Today we are going to be looking at the differences between uh, BMI, which is body mass index, body composition, which is a body fat percentage, and overall weight. And particularly, what's important is that your overall weight doesn't really matter, and I'm going to show you some examples there. Um, it might, but it might not. Uh, why some of the issues with BMI, and then also why body composition is so important. So let's jump right in. Here we have a BMI chart, and the problem with the BMI chart is it only uses height and weight. It doesn't differentiate between gender, it doesn't look at differences in skeletal frame, um, it doesn't look at differences in age, it doesn't look at differences in muscle mass versus fat mass, and all these things are important. So the BMI is only good for certain things. Like, for instance, we can see where somebody, we can like look at trends, right? So how people in society, we can look at height and weight, um, how their BMI is and if that increases disease risk. And it does tend to show that a higher BMI does increase disease risk, but it's much more complex than that. So let's jump in and try and start breaking this down. So let's say we have Molly here. She's 27 years old. She's 5'4 and she's 188 or 180 pounds. On the BMI chart, if we find her down here, 5'4, 180 pounds, it's going to put her just into that obese category with BMI. And I'm going to break down you know, Molly could actually be a healthy weight here. We just need to, uh, we need more data, right? Let's look at Jerry here as well. This is gonna be our other example. Jerry is 54, he is 5'8", and he is 205 pounds. So again, he's just into that obese category. He's got a BMI of 31. But again, BMI can misdiagnose people uh, quite frequently. So let's check this out. Again, here we have Molly. The BMI is saying that she's obese. But what's better is a body composition measurement, and this tells you body fat percentage. So over here we have this chart, and this is looking at the healthy ranges of body fat percentage, which these numbers are completely not associated with BMI. So don't start comparing the BMI range to this range because that is incorrect, okay? So BMI is its own scale, body fat percentage is its own scale. But body fat percentage is looking at your body composition and what your body is made up of, and particularly it's going to distinguish between lean mass and fat mass. So let's say Molly came into the performance lab. Uh, this is my main job. Here we do uh, body composition testing. So let's say she came in for a body composition test and we found that her body composition was 30%. So again, not associated with the BMI, but body composition here, 30%, that's gonna put her right in the health, healthy range for her zone. So the healthy range for women, according to this chart, is 21 to 33%. And that's going to put her at 126 pounds of lean mass, which is going to be bone, organ, muscle, tissue, all that good stuff, and 54 pounds of fat mass. And this might seem high, but you actually need fat mass to be healthy. Um, women particularly have at least 12% of essential fat. This is um, fat that is in like our heart and in our organs, and it's important for health. Uh, fat helps us build our cell structures. Uh, it helps mediate hormone response. So one of the signs that women particularly don't have high enough body fat is uh, it could mess with your cycle, you could lose it completely, it could be irregular. That doesn't mean it's always the cause, but it's um, oftentimes one of the main causes. So some people would suggest that women need 17% or higher, other people would suggest 21% or higher. Uh, there's different theories there. I like to go with the conservative number because then we know you're for sure healthy. But some women do seem to be fine into the teens, uh, but just beware of that. Okay, so how would we measure this body composition? Like, how did we get 30% there? So there's multiple ways we can measure. Some of you may have stepped on a scale before. Uh, it's called a bioelectrical impedance scale, and it gives you a body fat percentage. Those are okay. In my experience, and I've done lots of testing, like probably six years of testing now with this, uh, you know, in the performance lab, and the scales can give you some good information, but I've also seen them be wildly off, and we've done some research with them. They're just they're not very accurate. So if you do want it to be accurate, you should step on it like every morning, but I don't think stepping on a scale every day is necessarily a healthy activity. I think that can cross into the line, over the line of like an unhealthy activity. But you know, they can be 10% high, they can be 10% low, and that's very significant, right? That's gonna misdiagnose your health if your scale isn't working for you. So uh, just be aware of that the scales are okay. Uh, along with that, you know, your overall body weight, which I'm going to show you in a second, doesn't matter. So don't be stepping on a normal scale every day either. So this is one way we can measure in the lab. This is skin fold calipers. This is our cheapest method. It's like 20 bucks. Basically, what we do is we're measuring the thickness of the fat fold. And, you know, um, 
what we're doing here is we're trying to determine how much percentage of fat mass you have to lean mass because again the scale never tells you that and you really need to know that in order to be healthy we need a healthy ratio it's all about the ratio of muscle mass to fat mass that really matters so we can run this through a calculation we use a seven site and we get an answer uh, not the most comfortable thing in the world but it is the cheapest option Next, we have the bod pod. This is probably the easiest method. All you have to do, you come in, you sit in the bod pod for two 45 second measurements, and it spits out a body fat percentage at us. It uses air pressure, or air volume, I should say, to determine your density, and then from your density, we can estimate your body fat percentage. This is more accurate than the skin calipers, uh, but it's not the most accurate. It's like in the middle. It's still a really good assessment. Um, I really like this one, especially for uh, people who are just starting, like non-athletes, people who are trying to lose weight, I think the bod pod is a really good assessment. And then we have the hydrostatic weighing. So this is underwater weighing. This is the most premium measurement. It's fifty dollars. Um, and what you do, you go underwater, and we see how dense you are because muscle is heavy and it sinks, and fat is light and it floats, right? It's buoyant. So from how much you weigh underwater, we can determine exactly what you're made up of, and that's really what's important. So again, BMI, just using height and weight, it's putting you into a nice little box which isn't always so nice and uh, doesn't necessarily capture what's going on. So these are way better measurements. Let's take a look at Molly here again. So Molly, in our first body comp, we did her at 30%, uh, or we measured her at 30%. Now let's say she came in and we measured her at 11% using like, let's say the underwater weighing, right? Hydrostatic weighing. This is way too low for Molly as a female because females need more body fat, right? Uh, there's a bunch of sex-mediated hormones that rely on a fat percentage to, um, to release your hormones. Uh, you also need a certain amount, right? And that's where your cycle is linked with that. Uh, just for normal healthy life, women need at least 12%, and I would say more, at least 14 in my opinion. So uh, if we actually look at statistics, and this works for the BMI chart as well, if you are under fat, it does increase mortality rate. So there are health consequences to not carrying enough fat. So we need to get out of the mindset that uh, we don't need fat because fat is super important for life. It's super healthy, protects your internal organs, all kinds of good functions. So uh, if we did her at 11%, we've measured her at 11%, we would find that her lean mass is 160 pounds, which is super good, right? That's a ton of lean mass, but her fat mass is under 20 pounds. And in my experience, in order for women to be healthy, you need at least like somewhere between 30 to 50 pounds to be healthy. Now, not everybody, but for the most part, yet yeah, 20 pounds of fat mass is a little low. Um, and 4% of most women's body fat is actually breast tissue as well. And so that's, you know, again, those sex mediated hormones uh, require some amount of fat mass. So she would be underweight. She would be considered too little, which, you know, I get a lot of bodybuilders into the lab. This is kind of 11, 12, 14% is kind of what they're targeting. And if you're doing something like that, it's very important that you only do that for competition and then you get right back up to a healthy body fat percentage because this is really hard on your immune system and all kinds of stuff. So we need to be aware of being too lean. It's not healthy. And then let's say she came in for a body composition and we measured her at 40%. So this is gonna put Molly in the obese category. And the reason why this is a concern is because if we have too much fat mass, it increases inflammation, it causes a bunch of health problems. And so again, BMI, if we took this, we have three different humans here, all in different risk categories. And this BMI just slapped one category on Molly. So beware of BMI, it's not a good assessment for individuals. Let's look at Jerry real quick. 54, 5'8", 205, again, his BMI was 31. Let's take one assessment. He came in, let's say he did a bod pod, and we got him at 20%. So he would be in that healthy range for his age right here, 11 to 22%. So for men, men have a, need about 3% uh, body fat to be healthy. That's their essential fat. Now, again, men probably need a little bit more to like truly be healthy, but we're talking just like bare minimum. For women, again, 12. For men, 3 and that's bare minimum, you probably need more. And it's fairly genetic too. There's some genetic influence on where your body wants to sit. So be aware of that. So 20%, uh, he would be in the healthy category. If we broke that down, he would have 164 pounds of lean mass, which again is like bone, organ, muscle, all tissue, right? And then fat mass is gonna be fat mass. So Jerry also has 41 pounds of fat mass. Again, sometimes that seems high, but that's actually healthy for him. So uh, there we go. If we measured him and he was 6%, this is going to count him as being under fat. Again, maybe he's training for something. Athletes oftentimes get below 8%.
if you are below your body fat percentage, it's very important that you're eating like as many calories as you can because you got to be fueling and fixing up your body because food is what drives you. Fu food is like your fuel, right? Your gas or your car is not going to get very far if you don't have any gas in the tank, just like your body's not going to get very far if you're running on fumes. And that's one of the things that can happen if we don't have enough weight and then, or enough fat mass, I should say, because weight again, doesn't really matter. So this would be, you know, 192 pounds of lean mass, 12 pounds, 12.3 pounds of fat mass, or it's a little too low, right? And now let's say Jerry measured as um, 40%, right? So this would categorize him in the obese category. Um, and again, uh, yeah, you can see his lean mass and he has 82 pounds of fat mass, which is just too much to be healthy. The reason why I have over fat here instead of overweight is it's a new term people are using because again, the weight on a scale, it doesn't tell you anything, right? We have Jerry here at 205 and he's in one situation, he's healthy in one situation. He doesn't have enough fat and another, he has too much fat. So they're trying to switch over to the terms over fat and under fat rather than weight. Because again, if you're stepping on a scale every day, uh, you can take your scale and you can throw it in the garbage because it's just not that useful, right? And it can cause some unhealth, unhealthy uh, habits in your life and some unhealthy thoughts for yourself. So body composition, much more important. Let's compare male and females real quick so you can kind of tell the difference. So again, we have different hormone responses and we have different body fat needs. So for women, essential is 12% and healthy is probably in the high teens through the 30s, right? Through the low 30s for women. And then for men, you know, essential is 3%, probably more is healthier. And so we're getting up to like six to 8% is in that healthy range up to 20%. And it gets, it increases a little bit as you age, just because we get more visceral fat around our organs. So uh, just be aware of that difference, right? You can't compare yourselves. Uh, you know, I have oftentimes a couple will come into the lab, a male and a female, and we'll measure the female like 13 or 14% higher than the male. And a lot of times that really bothers uh, people, right? But you know, women have 12% more essential fat. So if you're comparing men and women, females should always have like 11 to 12%, maybe more uh, fat than their male counterpart, right? And so uh, just don't let those numbers get into your head too much, right? It's more important to be healthy uh, because it's just gonna, it's just gonna be better overall for your life. So some of the health um, issues real quick with having too much fat mass, uh, we see increases, increased risk in stroke, hypertension, cancer, diabetes, Alzheimer's. You get the idea. I'll let you look at that chart. Uh, we got problems with inflammation as well with too much fat mass. So this is why it's important to maintain a healthy body composition. But again, you got to be aware of just looking at your weight as an assessment and looking at BMI as an assessment because those are not very sophisticated measures of health. And that's why body composition is so important to know because it develops something specific for you, looking at your skeletal structure, your age, your gender, and just how much muscle mass you have is just very specific to you. Whereas these other ones are just generalities that don't really mean very much except for like maybe gathering mass data research where we can find correlations. But that's really the use for BMI and um, overall weight. So, okay, I hope you learned something. If you have any questions, you can leave a comment below. That's it for this video. I will see you in the next one.